This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now live from Studio C, it's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio C, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Thursday, August 4th, wherever and however you're connected. Great to have you with us. I'm Spencer Linton alongside a man who gets ready for football camp by riding his bike to work, Jerem Jordan. Bicycle. Okay, Preston Hadley, Janelle Guilford, they are back, and they've actually got a buddy with them. It's Coaches on Bikes. What's good? It's your boys. We back. Yay, yay. We're (laughs) back. It's been a minute. It took my guy about a year and a half to fix his flat tire, but we're here. It did, it did. (laughs) But I'm back. And I'm back better than ever. Baby! No flat tire will stop Gennaro Guilford. Yeah, and DJ Williams, by the way, is behind them, uh, who is a defensive graduate assistant, former Utah State player. Oh, it's a trio. It's a trio now. So, uh, <laughs> Coach Sound Bikes is back. It took him a year and a half to fix his flat tire. <laughs> it's a bicycle trio. They come from, like, Vineyard, I want to say. Yeah. That's not a short bike ride. They're going, they're going past UVU. On, I think, Parkway all the way down. That's that's a ways, man. So all defensive coaches there. Elisa Tuiaki is missing. Maybe we should ask E why he's not in on the bike commitment. Because he's got, like, seven kids to take care of, okay? <laughs> Touche. E, e is, he's, uh, uh, he's busy. Yeah. Yeah. The D.C. can drive, okay? When you're the coordinator, you drive. I'm just happy the bicycle trio is at least a trio. Yeah, it's yeah. Fantastic. There is uh, no better way to kick off fall camp coverage than by showing you the bicycle trio. And also, our pre-camp awards, Jerem. Yep, we've reached that time of year. Pre-camp. We have preseason awards across the country from all these publications. Why not pre-BYU training camp awards? Which player not named Jaron Hall are you most interested in watching? Let's say you had the golden ticket. You could watch every practice Except for Jaron Hall, which player are you most interested in watching? Plus, with, with that golden ticket, is Grandpa Joe just going to leap out of bed indeed. as well to go watch indeed. practice? Willie Wonka will be there too. I'm, I'm sorry, but that's bullcrap. Grandpa Joe's <laughs> sitting there in bed. <laughs> Boom! He's out of bed suddenly. Right. All it all it took was the golden ticket. The golden ticket is season tickets to be like football. All healing powers <laughs> within the golden ticket. Grandpa Joe. Don't forget about Greg Rebel, who will join us live with his burning questions for camp. Not just any questions. Burning questions. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. BYU football holds its first practice today of the 2022 fall camp season. Media availability at 2.30 Eastern time. Follow BYU Sports Nation on Twitter for live interviews and, of course, coverage throughout the afternoon on social media and, of course, throughout camp here on BYU Sports Nation. BYU women's basketball led by head coach Amber Whiting heavy on the recruiting trail. They announced that Arizona State transfer Gabby Bosquez has signed with the Cougars. A 5'7 guard played in 25 games last season for the Sun Devils. Averaged 18 minutes a game and three points. They like her potential a lot. That's great. Good uh, good pickup there. BYU golfer Addie Anderson advanced to the Utah Women's Amateur Finals and is in action as we speak. She's down three shots after 10 holes, so a bit of work right now in the final. The Big 12 Conference has extended their agreement with the Dallas Cowboys to hold the Big 12 Championship game at AT AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Through 2025, new Big 12 Commissioner Brett Yormark released a statement yesterday saying, quote, we are pleased to extend our partnership with the Dallas Cowboys for another two years and to continue holding our football championship in one of the world's finest stadiums. Oh, by the way, Gabby Vasquez. For Arizona State scored six points against BYU. Indeed, last, last year. year. In Provo. So she's used to the Marriott Center. She saw one. She's like, hey, I want to play here. I like those rims. Yeah. I like the depth perception she, in that she can arena. She scored 16 points as much as she wants this year. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Camp Kalani 2022, day one. And again, what better way to celebrate the return of football and specifically BYU football training camp than with our pre-camp awards and honors, if you will. (laughs) We have carefully, very carefully selected five extremely competitive categories. They are your MVP, the Mr. Looks the Part, the Comeback Player Award, the Surprise Player Pre-Camp Nod, and 
the Oh Yeah, That Guy Award. <laughs> like, we forgot about you. Hey, there you are. Only at BYU does that happen. You go, oh, yeah, we talked about you three years ago on signing day. I love that. Yeah. Uh, Two and a half years. That ago. award was brought up by Jerem, and I am on board for it fully. Oh, yeah, that guy. Okay, so we will go uh, one by one. You'll give your uh, – let's, let's, in fact, let's reverse this it. Let's end with we'll the MVP. Let's go step by step. Let's end with the MVP. Let's save the okay. MVP until the yeah. last. Yeah. So we'll start with Mr. Looks the Part. You give your guy, and then I'll give my guy, and we'll go one by one. I think the spring Mr. Looks the Part champ is going to win again mm -hmm. in fall camp mm -hmm. here. And again, these are what we think will be the the award winners after camp. So we're going to have to have, hand these out again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have to revisit The this. Mr. Looks the Part will be Ben Bywater again. Ooh, good choice. He's wearing the Mitch Matthews shorts, if you will. They're like illegally cut too high. <laughs> but Ben Bywater was that guy where you're like, oh, my gosh, you look incredible. Like, And he had a great freshman year, uh, stepped in for Keenan Peely, uh, who got hurt and had a, had a tremendous season. Led BYU in tackles. Like, no one was saying Ben Bywater is going to lead BYU in tackles going into last year. That's the fun part of sports. You think you know, you don't actually know. But we'll sit here and act like we do. Uh, ben Bywater is the Mr. Looks the Part again after spring. I agree with you, but for the sake of just bringing other names into the fold, if it's not Ben Bywater, I think the guy that's second on that list is Hinkley Ropati. Yeah, Hinkley. He's got, when, you, when your legs have their own Twitter account... <laughs> You're legit. That's true. At, they, at Hinkley Hinkley's Rapati's legs. legs right? That is a real Twitter account. <laughs> okay, so he's number two. If it's not Ben Bywater, it's Hinkley Rapati and his legs. Let's get Hinkley some carries, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Come. And your name's Hinkley at BYU. <laughs> Let's go. I didn't even think about that. Hinkley Rapati. Don't muff it. <laughs> if you know, you know. Yes. 2000. Shout Come out on. to the New Mexico game. Shout out to uh, Gordon B. The Lavelle era. Yes. Okay. Second award. The comeback player yeah. pre-camp award. Keenan Peely. Keenan mm. Peely is going to crush this one. Um, he is back. He is a huge part of that defense. I would dare say he needs to be BYU defense's best player. Not, not just tackles, because every play that doesn't result in a guy running out of bounds or a touchdown requires a tackle. Okay, So to some degree that is overrated, but the, the, the way he makes tackles, what tackles he makes on the field, what situations he makes them in, the confidence he gives the rest of that defense is huge. He's going to be the comeback player. We think he's going to be the reason that BYU goes from, like, the 78th best defense in the country up towards top 50. Top 50, yes. And, and, and the insurgence of that, and then it's got to be even higher. putting be Peyton Wilgar back in his usual position. Now we're talking in that linebacker. With, with Oregon and Baylor and Notre Dame and Arkansas and whatnot, if you're top 40, that's pretty good. Whew. Yeah, again, potentially special. Okay, uh, hard to argue with Keenan Peely, just because of how many tackles he's going to rack up. Yes, like, he's like, the guy. He'll be an immediate difference maker. Another guy that's coming back from injury that I think will make a huge difference in the secondary is Micah Harper. We didn't see a ton of Micah Harper last year, unfortunately. Zero, yeah. So to get him back in line, we will notice him in camp. It's yes. going to be good to have Micah Harper back with the, with the secondary and pass protection. So Micah Harper is my runner-up to Keenan Peely in the Comeback Player Award. Micah, again, 2020, only freshman that, that played prominently on that defense. His dad actually played at Hawaii against BYU and Ty Detmer. So, like, he, he could have anti-BYU sentiment, right? Like Cahill uh, Fennell of the men, men's basketball team we talked to him. He's like, I grew up hating Ty Detmer. Uh, but now he's at BYU. So, great to have Micah back. He is converted from cornerback to safety. And BYU needs some good safeties, right? You've got Malik Moore and sure. you've got a host of talented guys there. Um, excited to see what Micah does. Okay, on to the surprise player pre-camp nominees, if you will. And surprise is like, I didn't expect much, and then I got something, right? Um, it's Chase Roberts, mm. wide receiver uh, out of American Fork. All-American in high school, went on a mission. Essentially, reg he redshirted last year. When he got his hamstring healthy and his, his mission legs back, if you will, he was crushing it in practice. 6'4", good height, great hands, great route running. He is going to compete for that kind of number three, number four spot on this team. After next year, when Puka, Nakua, and Gunnar Romney are gone, it is the Keanu Hill, Chase Roberts show mm. for BYU. Chase Roberts is going to be a baller here. You know who you need to add to that list that will surprise people, also a wide receiver, is Cody Epps. Amen. Cody Epps has great potential to be the surprise player of 2022 football camp. Because he's been injured for 
basically the entire duration that he's been at BYU. He's been, this is his third yes, season here. It's been two full years. It's time for Cody Epps. And he's yeah. finally healthy. So Cody Epps, with that health in place, I feel like will surprise a lot of people on fall camp. Both Chase Roberts yeah. and Cody Epps. I love those guys. What if, what if I told you that a Heisman Trophy winner was chucking the ball to one Cody Epps? Bryce Young in high school was throwing the ball for like, 1,800 yards. His favorite receiver. And like 28 touchdowns, Cody Epps. Cody Epps was a USA Today first team All-American in high school. Rarely does BYU recruit and get, well, they recruit him, but get that guy. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited to see slot receiver Cody Epps put up some numbers. Okay, three awards down, two to go. <laughs> this is probably my favorite. The, oh yeah, that guy <laughs> award. Somebody that has fallen off your radar, yeah. whether it be oh, a guy yeah. that is back from his mission. Typically that. You know, it was recruited a long time ago, and it's like, oh, yeah, I remember that guy. Who's your, oh, yeah, that guy? Tate Romney. <laughs> Tate Romney is on the roster. That's the youngest brother of uh, Baylor and Gunner, of course. Tate went on a mission. He's a linebacker. He's, like, genetically just a little thicker than his brothers who are or more lean, right, quarterback, wide receiver types. Tate Romney's a linebacker. Now, I don't know how much Tate's going to play this year with the experience BYU has at linebacker, but you're going to see him and go, oh, yeah, a, another Romney. And, man, he's, he's thick. I saw him at Rays and Canes in Provo a couple months ago, like a month off his mission. I was like, how are you so big right now? He was on the Fui Vakapuna Regiment. <laughs> Crazy. Just eating chicken the whole time. Okay, my Oh Yeah, That Guy award goes to a man well down the running back depth chart. I feel like we've forgotten about him because Tyler Algier was so good. Christopher Brooks has transferred. Houston Hamilly has transferred. Mason Wake is back there as a fullback. Jackson McChesney is in the mix. We already mentioned Hinkley Rapati. Lopini. Lopini Katoa. Oh, yeah, that guy's Lopini? No, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> then, then, there's, then there's Miles Davis. Hey. Oh, yeah, that guy. If pee in your pants is cool, <laughs> call me Miles Davis. Miles right? Davis has work to do for BYU. We may see him in the return game, kickoff return specialist. Um, again, he's healthy, and the coaches have always been like, he's got this burst. He's got this spark. And coaches seen, love him. We've seen moments we of it. Love him. him. But he's like, it feels like he's like sixth or seventh on the depth chart. He'll see the field this year. Like what? Yeah, he. He'll I, see the field. I, I think he's the number three walking in. Uh, Miles it, Davis. It's going to be a battle with Jackson McChesney, Hinkley Rapati, and others, right? But Miles Davis is a guy that the coaches have lauded for a while, and we saw him a little bit in 2020 because BYU was just crushing Troy and Louisiana Tech. We saw Miles Davis, and we didn't time. see anybody because Tyler Algier took over the show. When you play seven Power Fives and some other good opponents, you, you're not in that kind of blowout position as much, right? So, yeah, Miles Davis is going to get some run this year. We'll, we'll see if he's the number three. And what did Jackson McChesney do to not deserve any playing time ever? Like what he did against USC, what he did against UMass in 2019. Sure. Um, you know, it, against Navy got hurt early 2020, so we didn't see him after that with, with the season ending, I think, at Liz Frank at that point. So that battle for, like, who's the number three running back, which let's be honest, I'm not sure how many carries we're going to see from that position with Christopher Brooks and Lopini Katoa, two proven kind of fifth-year senior guys. Is Brooks a fourth-year senior, fifth-year senior? Both seniors. Uh, there's some real depth at running back as well, we For think. For sure. We think. Okay, you got Tate Romney. I got Miles Davis. Now for your camp, most valuable player. Not named Jaron, right, Hall? Yeah, it typically, too easy. it typically lands on the quarterback, right? Like, Jaron Hall should probably be if the most valuable player in camp. If he's not, I think there's an issue. I think he will be. Um, besides him, I'm going Jacob Conover. People love the backup quarterback. <laughs> Classic backup People quarterback. Love that, like, oh, did you Stewart. see that throw by Conover? Christian Stewart, man, why didn't he play more? Baylor Romney, why isn't he the starter? <laughs> Jacob Conover, I think, is going to have a nice fall camp. I believe he walks in as the number two quarterback right now. Cade Fennigan is going to challenge him for that number two. Those two will battle it out. Maybe they bring in another transfer next year. Jaron Hall leaves, right, for the NFL, which we all think is going to happen because he's going to have a great year. Again, this guy turned down Alabama, three state titles. He's been used to being an underclassman, trying to fight for sure. time in high school. This is his third year in camp. Great story from him was he's, he's coming off a mission. He has the chance to go back out, you know, for a little while. He comes back and, say, uh, and comes to BYU in 2020. Yeah. And uh, Kalani said, hey, you can come in, but we don't have a scholarship for you right now. And he said, that's fine, it, just as long as you're okay if I beat out Zach Wilson and Jaron Hall for the starting job. Like, he was the swag. confident. He's the got swagger. the swag. Obviously, kind of was the number three last year behind Jaron Hall and Baylor Romney. Jacob Conover. All right. Uh, my most valuable player, not named Jaron Hall, Puka Nakua. 
I think Puka's going to have a massive camp. He's going to make the highlight reel catches. We're all going to see him from BYU photo and video like, oh, Puka made another amazing one-handed catch today. He did it in games last year, so, so of course that's going to continue into camp against his BYU defensive counterpart. So Puka Nakua, to me, will be the most valuable player because it'll be the, it'll be the loudest highlights produced. Totally. Absolutely. Right? He'll produce the loudest and highlights. And who's going to be throwing him the ball quite a bit? Jaron Hall. Jacob Conover, And Jacob too. Conover. The, both. Um, yeah, how many, how many reps do you give Conover is one question I have with this. Obviously, Jaron deserves the, most of the ones. But, like, you know what Jaron is. Obviously, you want to develop him. But, like, you need to have Jacob ready just in case. That's been proven just with any quarterback in college football and BYU is that backup's got to be ready. So how ready will Jacob Conover be should sure. he be needed? A couple of quick notes about Jacob Conover. Uh, according to Houston Hamuli, he throws the tightest spiral and the ball that makes his hands hurt the most when he catches it. That's he's that. he's okay. got the strong arm. Also, nice. he's got the backing of Max Hall. If you missed that interview, you can go back a couple of weeks ago, listen to our interview with Max Hall on why he is so high yeah. on Jacob Conover. That Arizona bias To out. take over for Jaron <laughs> Hall once Jaron leaves. Okay, our question yeah. of the day. Which player, not named Jaron Hall, are you most interested in during BYU football training camp? Let's hear from you, BYU Essen and Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Farmer He on Instagram answers. Wonder what uh, he or she does for work. Chris Brooks. I really want to see how well he can fill the gaping hole that Tyler Algier left. That was the hole he ran through. <laughs> I get that the team is still stacked, but that is still a big loss. Yep. Also, I'm paying attention to Puka Nakua. I'm yep. really excited to see how good he can be this year as a downfield threat. We saw how good he was last year as a downfield threat. Literally right? the first, uh, yeah, 100%. Literally the first offseason where Puka's been fully healthy. But there's that. First offseason. He's that. always been hurt. So now it's, it's time for him to go. And Puka is going to have such a good year. He's going to go to the NFL next year, I think, as well. All right. Like, like I want this for BYU football. COVID added kind of a year where he's like a fourth-year junior. Go get it, man. Joe Morris on Facebook says, the defense. BYU needs okay. much more defense than last season. That's what my mind is focused on for fall camp. There's always that fun conversation of, wow, the defense won the day. And it's like, oh, no, is the well, offense falling apart? This is BYU, so we want the offense to always win the day. Well, but the, but the defense. the defense. Yeah. Uh, is everyone going to be concerned if the defense is that? You know what I mean? <laughs> that give and take is funny. Hashtag hey, BYUSN to join the conversation. Should college basketball add a 24-second shot clock? And the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, joins us next. He offers his insights into his pre-camp honorees. This is BYU Sports Nation. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. This is where we dominate. Our playground, place of business. This is our promised land, where we seek to find ourselves. And we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best in class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake and Greg Rubel. When I was younger, I was a better dancer. Don't show any more dancing on me. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> I think we've developed some really good habits the last couple weeks and, and looking to step it up again. A lot of great things can happen when they care. Not bad. That's good stuff. Hey. Yay. Yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good one. <laughs>
BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. We're about to see more of that this year with Keanu Hill, man. Follow BYU Sports Nation on social media, especially Twitter, to get live post-practice interviews today from fall camp at about 2.30 Eastern. Size, physicality, he's 6'4", and he runs precision routes. Keanu Hill set for another big year as the entire wide receiver core is. We are live in Studio C. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. It is day one of Camp Kalani 2022, seventh edition of Camp Kalani. How about that? Let's and go. to help us further the conversation is the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, with us in Studio C. Greg, seven years now of Camp Kalani, uh, but this one feels a little bit different. Why does it feel different to you? Well, it will be the last time that BYU preps for a season without a conference championship for which to contend. Mm. And, and there's a lot of focus on, on the next version of camp and what it will mean going into the Big 12, which is why Kalani wants to put so much focus on this current version and letting the seniors go out the right way by giving them the best chance to succeed in this final year of independence. And so in, on one hand, Kalani is excited about what the transition means for this program, but I think he's really um, kind of bearing down on the fact that this is an important year for this program, regardless of what comes in 2023. Let's give these seniors, let's have these seniors help us have uh, a great season. Yeah, perhaps it, at some point in the past we were like, oh, we're going to be looking at the Big 12 too much instead of kind of the last year of independence. When you have this schedule, it's easy to focus on what you have. Now, not to mention there's a lot of guys who may be listed as juniors but are fourth-year guys who are hoping to make an impact, perhaps go to the NFL next year like we've talked about. And this is one of the most talented teams preseason we've had, Greg, in a long time. Yeah, it should be a pre. I mean, they'll be, they'll be ranked by a lot of people in the yeah. preseason, which doesn't always happen. Uh, we've already talked about the productivity numbers, how those are, you know, legit uh, on, on their face in terms of who's back and, and how much productivity returns. And so there are some eyes on BYU this year uh, before the season begins. You, BYU's had to kind of attract those eyes through September. And, and now the eyes are kind of on them in August. And now can they, can they keep them with the program through September is the question. And you find out real quickly because I, I still think that the South Florida game uh, becomes intriguing if for no other reason than Gary Bohanna is the quarterback of that team. And Gary Bohanna's got a W over BYU uh, just last year. And that's a program that, again, it, it's a slow build there in, in Tampa. But, you know, what a splash they're, you know, they could make by playing well in week one. So I, I, it's, it's just so tough to look, to look anywhere beyond South Florida right now, even though that Baylor home opener is intriguing for so many reasons. And, and that September becomes stacked in its own way. Yeah. Even though the P5s are kind of spread, you know, 2 September, 2 October, 1 November, I think is the way it breaks mm -hmm. down. Um, that, that, that first week, I think, mm. it, it's, it's first game for everybody. And uh, BYU will have to be sharp. And again, just, just having that quarterback there for them, for, for South Florida, is, is a kind of a calming force and a guy that's had some big time reps. Interesting week one, given BYU's really history in Florida, what happened last time with Jaron Hall yeah, there in his yeah. first start. What even happened last year? I, it's right? it's, yeah. it's yeah. very, very it was, not like the way it was a South, weird game. Yeah, Kalani did, didn't think they, they finished the South Florida game well. And, and so there, there's a lot to kind of throw into week one where people are going, oh, well, South Florida. But no, there's a few things there yes. that make it interesting. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. You brought up the preseason rankings. It's been 13 years since BYU was ranked in a preseason associated press yeah. poll. 13 years. It's a long time, man. Do you expect the Cougars to show up in the AP poll? I, I would. I expect them around the, in, in the back five somewhere. Uh, I, think, I think that's kind of where a, a lot of people have BYU, right in that range. Um, so it'd be great to have that preseason ranking, though, um, and like you said, after so long. Yeah. It's, it's, and it will not, it'll be nice, too, because, hey, go and get that dub in Florida, two in a row. Stay that's there. not a talking point anymore yeah. with Florida. Um, and then, and then, <laughs> then we've got Baylor at home. And right? it becomes a real marquee now, matchup. Yes. Now that's the game people are watching nationally. Totally. Yeah. And, and we expect BYU to compete well, perhaps even win that one. And then, hey, you go to Oregon, you're on Fox, uh, the rare Pacific Coast day game. So this is exciting. But let, let's talk about some of your fall camp storylines. Yeah. Obviously, there's like almost a month to go. But still, there are things to watch. What are you watching in full camp? One of the most intriguing storylines to me is, is who ends up on the offensive line. Um, mm. as, as, because someone who started a lot of games last year is probably going to be a backup this year. How wild is that? Uh, again, presuming Kingsley comes in and does what people expect him to do, someone who got a lot of starts will be starting the season on the bench. Now, are you referring to left tackle, right tackle? I'm referring to A and offensive line. Anything. 
because there were a lot there, there were a lot of guys that got starts and 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 pretty much everyone's back for the most part with the exception of James and and so uh, someone who was a, a guy last year might have to take a backup role this year which is great for the program right to have that kind of depth but I think it's one of the most intriguing things just to see where that thing settles uh, on the offensive line you might have a freshman All-American who doesn't start like we'll see with Campbell Barrington Harris Lachance versus Kingsley for right tackle Braden Kime is an up-and-comer Blake Freeland Feels pretty solid at left tackle. Connor Pay pretty solid at center, but like uh, and, and Clark uh, Barrington's Tuko, the right Joe guard. Tuko Afu. Joe Tuko Afu. So again, you, all those names you just mentioned, that, that's more than five. So, <laughs> you know, someone's going to sit. I like a problem to have. <laughs> I said this yesterday, Greg. I've never been more excited to watch the offensive line in my entire life, like yeah. than this group. Right. <laughs> What's your biggest question mark other than the offensive line and who's going to be in the starting five? Uh, question mark. Um, I guess I'd say the same thing. Every year. Can can BYU stay appropriately healthy mm. through camp? That is not missing mainline players for long periods of time or the season because it just seems like every year someone you're really counting on has something really unfortunate happen mm. during camp. I guess that's football, but would it be nice to, to go through a year where you're not talking about having to lose um, a, a front line, you know, mainline type A got to have them type player for any period of time. So that, that, that would be a question I want to have answered in a positive way. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited to see how, you know, where's Isaac Rex and his rehab coming back after a, a November injury. And then you look at the receivers and Dallin Holker as well. Like, does he take the next step? The receiver is exciting. Obviously, Puka and Gunner are the top two there. Keanu Hill feels, feels like the number three, but like Chase Roberts up and comer, Cody Epps, there's a lot of guys. So uh, if you were to look at a, a, um, a comeback player uh, candidate for this year, is yes. that one of your categories? Yeah, oh yeah. Sure. Comeback yeah. player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I probably look to both sides of the ball and coming back from injury in this case, right? Uh, Keenan Peely and, and Isaac Rex. Um, I think A-Rod told us during media day that he expected Isaac Rex to be full go for game one. Whether that means full go for camp day one or not, they expect me ready to go to start the season. Uh, can Isaac get back and can Keenan get back on, on either side of the ball? Those would be my comeback player candidates. Okay, yeah. camp love it. Year. All right, the Mr. Looks the Part. There's always that one guy when you show up on day one of camp, you're like, he looks like a football player. Okay, uh, and you let's, have to say it like that. Yeah, uh, let, let's first of all establish which part it is we're talking about, and I'll focus on the biggest part. Um, not returning, and that's Tyler Algier. Does Chris Brooks look the part? And mm. I think that, that'll be the one I'm looking to see. Mr. Looks the part. I go for Chris Brooks from okay. day one because you, you go for if, like player, if, not like physically. Yeah, but if there's yeah. one guy you're trying to replace, it's Tyler Algier, 90%. and he gets the first crack at it. And everything we hear is that he looks the part. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and, I love it. Yeah. And he looks the part, yeah. like jacked. Yeah. He, also, he also is yes. He also looks the part. That yes. was, that's the How about the physique. Oh Yeah That Guy award? Uh, Chase Roberts. Um, again, he caught his last high school pass four years ago, right? But he was like, he was an Under Armour All American coming. That was a remember how big that get that was at Legit. the time. Oh my yeah. goodness! Utah made a run. I mean, he was he you know was a Pac-12 guy. People wanted him out of the Pac-12. Utah makes a run. BYU get that was a big time get at the time. And of course, that's happened to BYU. These big signing day you know uh, uh, you know excitements taper off as he goes on a mission then last year was a year he sits there's some injury issues so it's been a long time so he's like hey that because that was a big time get when they got yeah, him yep. and I know he's only competing to maybe be the number three right now but another 6-4 receiver with uh, just crazy high school numbers and someone that has kind of bided his time a little bit right now so yeah it's going to be a battle for the number three but I think it'll be right there in that in that mix there's about to be an AF pipeline at receiver by the way <laughs> let's Seriously, go there's a bunch let's of go he certainly has the capability, speaking of Chase Roberts, to surprise a lot of people in fall camp. But that's another one of our categories. So maybe Chase is the same answer for the category. If not, is there another guy that will surprise you that you think you expect to surprise people in fall camp? And, and, and not a surprise from the extent of he has no pedigree, but because he's a newcomer to the program, Gabe Judy Lally might be a guy Love that it. steps in and plays right away. I mean, we're talking about, he was a starter in the SEC. Now it's Vanderbilt, program that is on its way, you know, trying to build from the bottom. But still, if you're a starting cornerback in the SEC, you've got some skills and some abilities that could translate. And, and so I think uh, the surprise would be um, that there are a lot of starts back at corner, right? I mean, you know, D'Angelo Mandel was locked in and Caleb Hayes played most of the year at starting corner and they're back. And there are a lot of starts in that secondary back. So can a guy come in and be good enough to knock someone off who was a starter 
and, and be a first game guy. So that, that could be a, a potential surprise. A loaded like group a too, right? Yeah, absolutely. And PFF loved his coverage skills. They said he was one of the best in the SEC down the field. So that's yeah. awesome. Okay, uh, fall camp MVP. We're kind of taking Jaron out of it for obvious reasons. Oh, okay. Uh, if we're going to do that. <laughs> he, you, want, you want that guy to you be your MVP. You want that right? guy, yes. Uh, I'll go Puka. Yeah. Uh, didn't have a camp last year. Right, and we saw once he got going just how good he could be. But that was a slow start to the season. They were working him in because he gets a camp injury, and he was like basically an MIA in camp uh, for no, you know, through no fault of his own, other than the fact that he was jacked up. So, can you get Puka for a whole camp healthy? I think if you do, he's going to be showing up on all those daily Twitter highlight yes, videos from BYU exactly. football. The loudest highlights, percent. right? Yep, that's so, what so said I, too. you know, and again, there are a lot of guys to look at, <laughs> but because of he, because of the fact he didn't have a camp last year, and I was so excited to see what he would do. That's kind of what I'm looking for this year as he gets a full camp and and looks like you know the take the top off guy he really is. 805 yards with the slow ramp up. I yeah. think a thousand's within his grasp. Like he's a thousand yard if, if a guy. full season guy. Yeah. Yes, if he's a full season guy. Yeah. Yes. And and you know you know his running mate is, is the other guy you'd want to see have a really strong camp, and, mm -hmm. that's, and that's Gunnar Romney, because you know the only question with Gunnar's ever been you know durability and the ability just to stay. He, and he takes a lot of punishment. The way he plays, the way he plays the position, the way he lays out, the number of times he's on the ground making great catches. Um, he does get battered, but uh, can he have a healthy camp and a strong start to a season? If you started the year with a healthy Puka and a healthy Gunner, wow. uh, I mean, on the it's edges, on. it really is. Yeah. Yeah. The voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Before you go, and because the blue-white scrimmage is this Saturday night for BYU women's soccer. Yeah, it's going. We've got to ask you about the number three preseason ranking. Yeah, yeah no pressure. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, Let's you, go, you lose Michaela Coulihan and just a wealth of score. I mean, Cameron Tucker as well. Uh, you starting lose keeper. your starting keeper in, yeah. in Cassidy Smith. Like, number three, what do you think of the number three preseason ranking given that BYU lost so much talent? Yeah, well, in that national runner-up, and yet a lot of pieces back, you do lose, like you just said, really key cogs. But what a, what a, what a great measure of respect for Jen and the fact that this isn't just, um, it, it's not just a team, it's a program. And they trust the program. Um, you know, they, they know that, that while those two main goal scorers are gone, uh, the cupboard's not bare. And, and ultimately, they believe that Jen is going to, you know, put another nationally prominent team on the pitch. And that's, that's tremendous respect at, at number three. It's so exciting. And it gets, starts this weekend, blue-white. Then they'll have some alumni action next week. Then on the road to North Carolina. Now, it won't count, count in the standings because it's technically an exhibition. But Carolina is going to play VCU and BYU in their two exhibitions. And these are legit matches. And one that hasn't really happened um, in, a, in, a, in a regular season or postseason setting for some time and BYU's first ever trip to Carolina. Mm. We'll find out pretty early where BYU stacks up with these, you know, teams like Carolina, another top 10 yeah. team uh, as well. And I, I, I'm moving forward even a little bit more. Um, this team that we're seeing this year will come back more or less intact next year, which is the first year of the Big 12. One senior. And it, it, they'll, they'll lose maybe one player off this year's team, right? <laughs> so that's the team they'll bring back for the first year of the Big 12. If you want to talk about which BYU program will be the first to win a Big 12 championship, you might be looking at it. Yeah. The, 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 at the seeds being sown this weekend. Yeah. Women's cross country might on the calendar play earlier just to get that nod. But yes, I agree. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I think soccer takes the pitch first, so then cross countries meet start soon thereafter, yes. right? I just yeah. mean the championships. Where it comes yes. in the calendar, yes. yeah. Right. Both will win that first year potentially. Yeah. Which is wild because the WCC is actually a better league than the Big 12 in soccer. Yeah. Well, you could argue that. Yeah. 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 yeah they put like two teams in the tournament last year. It's yeah. like two? We put two in the final four. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. All right, Greg. Great stuff. You bet. Fall camp is back. Thanks for hanging out with us. Let's go. Okay, coming up, who are you most interested in besides Jaron Hall at fall camp? And how many times will BYU football play at AT&T Stadium in the future? Before 2025 specifically. Mm. This is BYU Sports Nation. One, two, or three.
It's our focus. It's your expectation. We provide support to those that go the extra mile for all of us. Supplying products, training, and service for generations. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Hey family, if you're looking for something new to watch, stop scrolling and start streaming. BYU TV has a ton of great options to binge together. From bold adventure to family drama and even a little fun, there's something for everyone. Binge entire series, experience all the feels, immerse in non-stop entry, and treat yourself to unexpected turns. Think you know BYU TV? We're just getting started. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. To interact with BYU Sports Nation, get content throughout the day, follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He is Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. We're in Studio C, and it's time to whip it. The Cougar Whip Round presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. The new Big 12 ain't messing around. John Wilner of the San Jose Mercury News tweeted 2019 average attendance numbers for the Pac-12 and Big 12. <laughs> and the Big 12 Twitter account, the official one, responded with a graphic showing the percent of capacity numbers in response. Here's John Wilner's tweet. Okay. okay. And then the Big 12 actually quote tweeted this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> with numbers comparing them. Will the Big 12 be this aggressive in actual expansion, Spencer? <laughs> uh, I have no reason to believe they won't be. After everything that's happened over the past few weeks, Why the open for business commentary, and we're not sure if we're shopping there in response by George Klyovkov and the Pac-12. Yes, you can expect very aggressive social media maneuvering from the Twitter and Instagram accounts of well, the conferences. Does the social media activity reflect the league's same aggression? In a level? way, I believe it does. We hope it does. I believe it does. We hope it does. I don't think Brett Yormark and anybody in the Big 12 office would be okay with not okaying a tweet like that. Not okaying every tweet, but yeah. Like that one, whoa! Like, yeah. The, the big bosses here aren't okaying every BYU Sports no, Nation tweet, right? Touche, yeah, but yeah. given the public, like, eye that has been placed on that specific thing. I'm guessing Brett liked it given yes, it's open for business. Exactly, comments. exactly right. <laughs> I'm here for it, man. It's very, very oh, entertaining. Funny. I was like, oh, wow. Uh, let's stay with the Big 12. Championship game, as we noted, will be played in AT&T Stadium, the home of the Dallas Cowboys, through 2025. How many games will BYU play in AT&T Stadium from December of this year through 2025 in the Big 12 championship game? Yeah, we won't be playing in it uh, this year, uh, but hopefully one time in 24 or 25. 23 will be a rebuild, I think, to some degree for BYU and transition year. But it, one time in 24 or 25 would be awesome. Once. BYU's going to play in AT&T Stadium once in the first three years. That's going to happen. Maybe it's 2025. Uh, and, and when Texas and Oklahoma, Texas and Oklahoma are gone. There's more opportunity. Perhaps. Right? Maybe yeah. it's 2025 and Perhaps. BYU's had a chance to build again with a different quarterback. Maybe that quarterback is Jacob Conover. Perhaps. Perhaps. Senior. Maybe. Michael Felder from BetMGM tweets, if BYU can get to double-digit wins again, they should be in the discussion for the playoff. Whoa. Is 10 wins enough to get the Cougars in the playoff discussion? That's some serious respect for the 2022 schedule, uh, but no. Now, I do believe that with the difficulty of the schedule and playing so many returning conference champs and, guys, and teams picked to win their conferences this year, if BYU is 10 and 2 at the end of the regular season, this schedule will carry more weight than last year's schedule, I believe. So I think that the teams will, will prove to be more challenging. We hope that okay. what happened last year. Well, here's the thing: it's two-sided. BYU wins more of these if these teams aren't as good as we thought, right? Like last year, if all those, if 
some of those Pac-12 teams are like way better. Maybe BYU drops a couple. Well, maybe but, BYU beat the Pac-12 champion head to head. Right. But also played a close game with a five and seven USC team. Like you just go and win as much as possible. The, yeah, this You're year. You're ten and two. This year, ten and two should not get you in the playoff discussion. But New, New Year's six. six. Yes. Yeah. Especially if one of those wins is Notre Dame. New Year's exactly like, right. Like I would rather beat Notre Dame and lose to at Boise State than I would beat Boise State and lose to Notre Dame. BYU, BYU could lose to let's say they lose to Notre Dame and at they Oregon. lose at Oregon, but they. They beat Baylor and they beat Arkansas. They win at Boise State. I would rather have a Notre Dame win than. I, I, I understand. Yeah. Like That'll that ten and two, it's, it's you would think it will carry more credibility because you've got to win over an SEC team and you've got to win over the team that's picked to win the Big Twelve more and Baylor. More variety than just the Pac-12. Yes. Yeah. Though BYU does need I'll to win both Pac-12 all. games so that they can keep the Pac-12 South Championship banner Oregon rolling. Yeah, play. we need to hang that again if they go 2-0 this year. Just hang it now. <laughs> Why not? Zach Wilson, listen to this, went 8-for-8 eight eight passing with two touchdowns in a New York Jets practice yesterday, team drills, on his birthday no less. Which is the better perfect Zach performance? The 18-for-18 18 18 Idaho Potato Bowl performance or is 8-for-8 birthday practice as an NFL quarterback? 8-for-8 uh, eight in a practice is not something I care too much about, although that's great. 18-for-18 uh, 18 18 in a game is super legit. So I'll go the famous Idaho Potato yes, Bowl. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's a game, and it's 10 more passes attempted and 10 more passes completed. We're not talking about practice. We're talking about We're a talking game. We're talking about an actual this is a, game. This is and a reverse and he was a freshman, Jerem. Yes. He was a freshman. Yes. He was wearing number 11 because he yes, was a he freshman. Was there, wearing number 11. The, just wear 11 the rare this number 11, play. Zach Wilson. Ready? Oh, Levy Hippo with the juke. ESPN college football analyst Fran Fraschilla tweeted, it's time for college basketball to adopt 24-second shot clock. Is it time for college basketball to adopt a 24-second shot clock? I'm fine with a 30-second shot clock. If they want to take it to 24 seconds, great. Fine, yeah, speed up the game. That, that's fine. But as long as it's a 30, I'm good. 30 is fast enough to me. 30-second shot clock is fast enough to me. It doesn't have to go all the way to 24. But, hey, speed, speed up the game, great, yeah. I'd be cool with 24 because what it eliminates is two more dribble handoffs in the league. Okay. I'd be okay. That impacts With BYU heavily based on what BYU did last year. Yeah, but they can evolve. Okay. Big Game Boomer is back in the Cougar Whip around. This morning they posted a Welcome list of back. the best college mascots entering the 2022 season. Cosmo, shockingly, in at number three behind Auburn's Abby, the Tiger, of course. Abby the Tiger's one? And Puddles the Duck at Oregon. Well, I just said the Duck. It's Puddles. it's Puddles. His name is Puddles. Yeah, he has a name and a blood. Okay, so the fact that Puddles didn't show up on the list now <laughs> takes away all credibility. Yeah. So Cosmo uh, should be one. Cosmo's number one. We saw we saw in the mascot challenge during the COVID breakdown. And, like, and we've seen Cosmo dance. And we've seen Cosmo dunk from the three-point line. Obviously, we're biased here. We work for Brigham. Cosmo is Cosmo's truly number one. The greatest mascot number in one. the history of this or any other planet. Okay, ESPN has the Nathan's hot dog eating contest. ESPN the deuce has cornhole. They've mm -hmm. now added the USA Mullet Championship to its programming lineup. <laughs> what should BYU TV look into adding into our sports programming? I have so many questions before I even answer this. <laughs> how do you How do you judge a mullet? Compete with your mullet. Like, do they have like, how does your hair flow in the wind? Uh, the length, how does the it, curl. How does it compare like, to your how? head size? <laughs> do you have a mustache <laughs> slash beard? How long did it Is take? it curly? To grow the mullet, like, are all oh, those things genetics? considered? Well, uh, I, also, I just learned the Orioles beat the Rangers 6-3. Congratulations. Oh, and apparently our social media team has put something together. So I'm a little, oh, boy. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Mine looks, dude, yours is legit. <laughs> Mine looks you got amazing like, and so gross. You got, like, your frothy curl <laughs> on your right side there. <laughs> That is mine, mine wow. looks like uh, something out of uh, East. What is it? Eastbound and down. Yeah, that's just that's just wow. <laughs> wow. That's Ooh. great. I apologize for well, everyone that had to look at that. The spirit of the safety zone resides here in the studio. So we're, not, we're not rocking. The, uh, uh, I didn't mullet. answer the question. Um, if we had to add some on BYU TV, they're doing mullets. Can we do a green jello eating contest? 
Uh, I'll go a crock pot challenge. I think uh, <laughs> well, that's on brand. The crock pot crock challenge. challenge. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't delicious. wait for the show. Delicious. Coming to BYU TV's lineup in the spring of 2023, the crock pot challenge. The Big 12 era will feature crock pot challenges. <laughs> Coming up. And the bonus jello eating contest. <laughs> Please. Let's try to... <laughs> What's today's rise and shout out? Well, it's more of your social media responses to our question of the day. And hopefully some social media responses to those mullets. Who are you most interested in during fall camp at BYU? This is BYU Sports Nation. And will anyone have a mullet? Any Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history. There is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're here for you. Call us today. Luxurious blanket. Getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. happening in Seaburg. They care more about people spending money than they do about people getting sick. If they're causing toxic pollution, it is everyone's fight. We can't just let them get away with it. If anyone can figure this out, it's my brother. Friends don't abandon each other. Fine, be heroes. I know what it's like to love someone so much you'd do anything for them. Whatever happens, I'm glad we're facing it together. Me too. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Jamie Shepard yep. with the goal. Hey, we're going to see plenty of that this year. Blue and white scrimmage Saturday, 9 Eastern on the BYU TV app. Jamie Shepard moving from holding mid to attack mid, kind of at 6 to 10. Yep, she's taking over from Michaela Coolan. Let's go, man. Uh, it's going to be great. This team's loaded, went to practice yesterday. Uh, they, Like Greg talked about, it's a program, not a team. And they have a certain confidence from last year's run that is really special. They believe they're very good. Are they the third best team in the country? They'll certainly have to prove They'll have that. opportunities to prove yes, it. Yes, and they have a great schedule, and we're going to have a fun season again. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live in Studio C. Our question of the day, which player not named Jaron Hall are you most interested in during BYU football training? Jamie Shepard. <laughs> it is football, right? Yeah, there you go. You can go there. It's a beautiful game. At Colton underscore Hammer answers on Twitter. He says Keanu Hill and Cody Epps, nice. both are receivers that have been talked about for a while. Yep. Hill showed some great strides last season. Epps seems to be healthy and turning heads. Can they be the next reliable targets behind Puka and Gunner? And, Jerem, we talked a ton about Chase Roberts. Like, that's like the I core five right there. Yes, that's the core five, we think. Uh, who led the team in yards per catch last year? It was Keanu Hill at 19.1. Deep threat, great, great performance against USC, which was awesome. Cody Epps, we talked about his high school resume and how he's kind of waited two years almost due to injury and whatnot, to get to this point. It's exciting because we, we walk into this season knowing a lot, but there's also enough intriguing questions about depth to be interested in who else is there. It's Puka and Gunner, the big two. Keanu is a proven commodity emerging, right? Not as a, He'll be a, a top two guy next year, but then you have the young guns uh, coming in. So that's the ideal scenario is you have the proven guys coming back who are going to be studs, NFL types, and then up-and-comers who are about to become those guys. That, the wide receiver position is exactly what we want out of every position sure. at BYU right now. That's an interesting stat that you bring up because I think most fans, even football insiders, people that watch BYU football closely would say, who had the most 
yards per catch on average, you would default to Puka Nakua because it was, was only point four less. He was the big play receiver, but yeah, it's actually it was, Keanu it, Hill. It was Keanu. And, and I can think of two big long catches that were instrumental in BYU season last year. One against Utah. Yep, he got behind the defense. It was a little underthrown yes. on the way he scores. And the other against USC, obviously. Totally, which Jaron puts on the money. There is a USC safety that we showed in that highlight coming back from break that thinks he's picking that ball off. Over his arms. And arm. it goes over his arms into the streaking Keanu Hill for a touchdown. Like, that was a great throw by Jaron. At Matt I. Cosmo on Twitter says, I'm excited to see those injured players return. Keenan Peely, Micah Harper, Isaac Rex. But I'm most interested in the unknown, Christopher Brooks. Yeah. I met him at a fan fest, and he's a human tank. <laughs> excited to see what he can do running the football. Got a few tanks in the backfield. The, Christopher Brooks, uh, we believe, is going to be a stud. Like, a real stud where at Cal on some not great teams, had some good numbers, but now he comes to BYU with something to prove. And if you're Christopher Brooks, you're thinking, dude, I can get drafted by being on a good team with good O-line, with a good schedule on ESPN. He's, he's got a shot if he has a good year to physically put up numbers at the combine and give himself an NFL chance. We hope he's Tyson Williams 2.0. Yeah, yeah, he's right? taller. He's taller and bigger than Tyson. But, I mean, a guy who's coming here for one year – who wants to go to the league, and this can be the launching board for him. He's, he's got a chance to do something special because he's a good player, and he's behind a great offensive yeah. line, and he's got a great quarterback. 5.2 yards per carry behind very, very suspect offensive lines at yeah. Cal. No, like, if he, if he could put up five this year, we're in business. He, and he does not need to be Tyler Algier. We do not need him to be Tyler Algier. Because Tyler saved BYU's bacon a couple times. Jaron Hall needs to, to save BYU. Tyler had to save BYU's bacon last year because Jaron Hall missed a few games. Baylor Romney's concussed. Like, there, there are situations where BYU had to rely almost solely on the offensive line and Tyler Algier. I, I looked at the usage rate on Tyler Algier in the fourth quarter against Washington State the other day, and it was 91%. <laughs> Like, literally, they handed you the ball You know what's to going to happen, and you can't stop it. Every down against Washington State to win that game. Is there any more defeating feeling than that? Like, you know what's going to happen, You're just and we better. just can't stop and it. And your hair smells like cinnamon, Veronica Corningstone. Christopher Brooks is a great – Is a, he's the biggest question mark, I think, going in. But I feel like we, we think he's, he's pretty good already. It's just seeing him, seeing how he runs. We're not going to know – until probably through game three, like how effective Christopher Brooks is. And if we can call him Chris, because right now we're going Christopher. <laughs> Topher Brooks. To yeah, don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> At Ty Scott Jensen on Twitter says, Brooks, Katoa, Tyler Batty, he adds. Mm. BYU needs someone to be able to put pressure on the quarterbacks and hit quarterbacks constantly this season. Yes now, and no. And it's, again, this goes back yeah. to the conversation we Related had with, to the, pressure. with Eliza Tuiaki mm -hmm. on Media Day, which was, okay, we want to create disruption and chaos. That and comes in various ways. so many different ways to do that other than just sacking the quarterback. And trust me, I'm not using that as an excuse. Like, should BYU have more sacks? Yeah. Should they have more havoc and disruption? Yes. yes. But at what cost? Like, there's a risk-reward factor when it comes to situational football and when you blitz and why. Go back to Media Day, like you said, and go listen to Elias Tuiaki because we went in-depth on the metrics behind sacks, right? And why, why you don't always want to, You can put secondary pressure on a team by dropping more. I know fans don't like it, but guess what? It's hard for that. If you ask Jaron Hall, would you rather have someone blitz or drop A? I bet you would say, hey, blitz. I can sidestep that or I, get yes, the ball out I quick. Can make, I can make a decision a, quick. There's a, there's a hot read. I have to find that pocket, right? Um, so, in fact, let's ask Jaron that at practice this fall. What's harder to maybe maybe against. we'll do it today. Let's yeah. If we get Jaron today, we'll uh, maybe we'll, we'll do it today. Okay, yeah. coming up, who gets today's elite voice of the day? Plus, a rise and shout out simply to the greatest game. This is BYU Sports Nation. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrum.com.
Gather the family for a midweek pick-me-up with an all-new lineup Wednesdays on BYU TV. Is that cool? Is that okay? You want inspiring? Yeah, we got that. Fun? Definitely. And surprising? Well, you'll just have to find out. Enjoy a marathon of good works to lift and inspire you for the rest of your week. See it all Wednesdays on BYU TV or anytime on the free app. Paul Brandt is laying his guitar aside and picking up a hammer. There actually are things that can be done to help people in situations like this. This is our house, for real. I don't think you can ever dream too much. As the receivers become the givers, they in turn help themselves. Watch Paul Brandt's Build It Forward on BYU TV or with the free app. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps today if you haven't already. Or download the podcast on your favorite podcast plat platform. Yeah, platform. <laughs> Subscribe, rate, review. I like platform. Flat platform. <laughs> yeah. That's the goal of everyone at Vasa. <laughs> what? Our question of the day. Flat four. Uh, <laughs> which player not named Jaron Hall are you most interested in during BYU football training camp? Our elite voice today presented by Sundance Mountain Resort comes from Michael Croxall on Instagram who says, can BYU go through fall camp without a major injury? Yeah. That's all I want from fall camp. Hey, you and Greg. Let's have a fully loaded team in Tampa this year. Of course, Tampa is where the season opener happens against USF. A.K. fully healthy team. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that, Kalani Sitake always says that. It's the number one priority of fall camp. Yet, he told us yesterday, I realize that it's football, and if we want to tackle properly, th there's some risk there, right? But, like, no major injuries. They don't Please. feel as scared about the potential risk this year because of the depth. That's the word, right? Yeah. The depth that is yeah. now with this team, which is good. That's good. Of course, we don't want anybody to get hurt. But if BYU does have an injury. It's football. They happen. It's part of the we reality. Think yeah. they, we think they'll be able to bounce back. Yeah. Okay. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Let's give it just to the game of football. First NFL preseason game. Hall of Fame game, baby. Game. Raiders, Jags. Let's go, man. Yeah. The Jags, no, post literally, Urban Meyer. Let's go to Canton. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and how many days until South Florida? Countdown to the Bulls. 30 days away. Yeah, 30 days away. I'm like, do we throw the away in? You throw it in. 30 days away. Let's go. Our thanks to today's guest, Greg Rubel. Started at a spin and ran out of time. Conversation continues 24 7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYU. For Jeremiah, I'm Spencer. Shout out to Mike Empey. Join us on the BYU Sports Nation Twitter account for post practice interviews and complete coverage beginning at 2 30 Eastern. Go.